Good day first world travellers and welcome back to another London video. In this video we're going to be having a look around an area that I actually know quite well. The city of London, Shoreditch and Brick Lane. And just to let you know, for all you foodies out there, there will be food in this video. So stay tuned. Everybody in short skirts, shorts and shades. I like it in the city when too So welcome to the City of London. Today I'm in the bank area, very close to Threadneedle Street. Now it doesn't take a genius, but the City of London is pretty much the key financial area of London. You've got the Bank of England, you've got various other banking institutions. It pretty much stretches from Daffod London Bridge, near Monument, through Cheapside Bank, down Threadneedle Street, up to Liverpool Street and Bishopsgate. So just a little bit of useful information or maybe useless information. The City of London is very much thought of as its own separate entity compared to the rest of London. So it has its own police force, the City of London Police, compared to the Metropolitan Police in the rest of London. See, useful. And a bit of history of Bishopsgate, which is the road that I'm on right now. This area was severely damaged by an IRA bomb in 1993. There was a church, which I'll put on the screen right now, a very old church that was actually completely destroyed. And over there, is where I used to work. So I haven't mentioned this on my channel before, but I used to be a personnel manager for Tesco, a large supermarket in the UK for about 18 years. And that was one of the stores I worked at, Bishopsgate Metro, for about a year. I haven't been to this area for about three years. So um, it's interesting to see that it has actually changed quite a bit. There's a lot more construction, as you would expect, in the centre of London like this. So um, it's a bit of a flashback, very really bit strange, but probably not going to go in because I'll have to talk to people that I don't want to talk to. Okay, to my left is Liverpool Street Station, which is on the central line you can also get trains out of London for example to Essex using this station but in terms of someone to eat in this area behind the traffic lights over there is 24-hour polo bar I went here a few times when I worked around here basically they do 24-hour breakfast how good is that? so just a quick stop off before we go to Brick Lane I am in Spitalfields Market which is basically an undercover market I'm gonna put the opening times on the screen right now so you know when to come basically it's made up of clothing jewelry artwork things like that the more sort of independent vintage eclectic style of thing which is very um, common to this area of London also you've got um, actual proper food establishments so it's not like street food or anything like that it's not that kind of market so uh, yeah this is a really worthwhile area to come especially if you're looking for that slightly individual look especially when it comes to clothes and also if you don't want to eat at the one of the more regular well-known chains you can come to this area it's really cool so you've got these nice little small food places to eat you've got seating areas and also these things behind me are actual seating areas as well how cool is that and you've got music playing great place to come for an afternoon so here's some of the food on offer you have poppy's fish and chips cafe caribbean pill pal that's like falafel things like that and over here you have some other things such as salamis beautiful so that's an italian area with some anti-pasti and over there you also have a greek area with things like olives and things like that so all in all if you are a fan of multicultural cuisine spitalfields market is the place to come So Brick Lane is very multicultural, it's got a history of Irish and Jewish immigrants I believe, but now it's very much more different. Yes there's still the Jewish aspect which I'm going to show you in a sec, but also you have Vietnamese places, I'm talking about food places, curry places, Chinese, all that sort of stuff. And as you head into Brick Lane and Shoreditch area, one thing you notice quite strongly is the fact that the look of the people changes quite significantly in terms of what they're wearing, how they look. It's very much more eclectic, more vintage clothing. Hipster central, basically. You've got skinny jeans, which I hate. Beards, hipster beards. 
Um, so yeah, that's Brick Lane. We're going to go and eat somewhere now, which is famous in Brick Lane and famous in London. So um, come with me. One thing you'll also notice about Brick Lane is the fact that it's very colourful. I'm talking about the graffiti, I'm talking about the artwork. So this area is well known for Banksy, the artist, doing his stuff on all the walls. And um, many people may think that graffiti and murals, that sort of thing, will look awful. But actually, I like it. It adds character. That's what this part of London is all about. So um, make sure you take a look at all the artwork. Some of it is quite interesting, to say the least, including this one that I'm showing you right now. Crazy. Okay, I'm starving, so I think it's time for some food, wouldn't you agree? Behind me is Hello. a shop. Hello. <laughs> Fancy a bagel? Right, I'll start again. So behind me is Bagel Bake. This is a famous bagel shop. It's 24 hours on Brick Lane. You know what? They make 7,000 bagels a day. How ridiculous is that? It's got the usual kind of fillings in terms of bagel fillings. I used to have these when I worked in Bishopsgate. They're the best thing on the planet. I'm going to have the salt beef one, which is my favourite. Uh, you can see there's a massive queue in there. Um, it's very popular, in case you ain't gathered. So in true first world traveller style, I've set my camera up on top of a bin, ready to eat some food. Just look at this. Oh my god. Beef looks stupendous. It's gonna eat the beef. Mm. <laughs> Literally heaven. <laughs> So anyway, once they've stopped talking, you notice from the um, price board in the shop, which I'll show you now, the salt beef one, because it's a more famous one, everyone knows this place because it's a salt beef bagel. It's more expensive, so it's £4.10 for this. Um, you can have mustard and pickle on it, I've just got mustard. Um, all the other bagels are substantially cheaper. I would 100% recommend coming to Bagel Bake. I've forgotten how good these are. It's literally the best food I've eaten in 2017. The award to the best food in 2017 goes to Bagel Bake. Beautiful. So I'm now a bit confused by the amount of awesomeness that I've just shoved down my cake hole, as they say in East London. What was I gonna do in this video again? Oh, I can't remember. The beef has fried my brain. Shoreditch, that's the one. I'm in Shoreditch. Pretty much it's the same as Brick Lane, basically. But I wanted to show you Shoreditch Box Park. Oh, the bagel. Enough about the bagel, it's time to go to Shoreditch Box Park for the last part of this video. Right, last stop of this ridiculous video is Shoreditch Box Park, which is right behind me. Now, the box park is basically a collection of old shipping containers that has been converted into independent shops. And these shops are clothing shops, there's food shops as well. And in terms of the clothing especially, it's very, like I said, very eclectic vintage, which fits in very much with this kind of area. Um, I've been here before, two years ago, and it's changed quite significantly, I believe. I think it's got bigger. Now, Bock Park is a company, basically. They have another one in Croydon in South London. If you're watching this in 2018, I believe there's gonna be one in Wembley in North West London, and there's talks of one in Walthamstow, which is in kind of North East London. Let's go and have a look around the Box Park. I'm talking a bit copy in this video. And if you want to know the location of the Shoreditch Box Park, here it is. It's Bethnal Green Road. And it's right next to Shoreditch High Street Overground Station. If you watch my two videos, you'll know that that is the orange line. And as you can see here, you've got traders on the first and ground floor. They're all basically independent traders. So it's not, um, you know, chains of shops, that sort of thing. You'll notice outside each of the shops there's a little box on the floor with a shop name so it helps you identify which shop 
is which. Also on the top you have number that corresponds to the key that I showed you a minute ago when we got to the box park. And what surprises me, you have so many different types of shop. You have nail shops, you have a shop dedicated to e-cigarettes. You, Like I said, you have clothing, you have a crepery, a donut place. And it all looks very, um, not high tech, but good standard. Oh, blimmin' heck. There was a car accident there. I'm thinking of having a crepe. Even though I've just shoved that bagel down me gob. I'm not going to do it. So my time at the box park is done. By the way, I don't know when this video turned from being a serious information one to getting crates with parts and Smarties in it. But anyway, it's happened. So if you have enjoyed having a look around Brick Lane, Shoreditch and the city of London, make sure you hit that like button down the bottom. Leave a comment as well. Have you been to the box park? Have you been to Brick Lane? If you've had a bagel, let me know what you thought of it. Nah. The other thing is to subscribe also, hit that subscribe button, that would mean a huge amount to me. Thank you for watching and I will catch you later.